So it's almost the end of May and although I'm wearing this Hawaiian shirt, it is very, very cold. The temperature is only like 13 degrees today. Throughout April and I think most of March, we had very dry weather. We didn't have a drop of rain. So for almost eight weeks, we didn't have rain. But in the last 10 days, it has been raining almost every day. You look at the sky, every now and then we get a short, sharp shower. And uh, this is typical of April and May. Usually we call them the spring showers or April showers, but it's happening in, uh, in May. And look at the strong wind. You see how the leaves are being blown by the wind. So this video, I'm going to call it topical tips. Usually in late spring, a lot of activity goes on. These are our maples which we have potted up and although they were brought up in the in the growing tunnels let me show you the growth all this growth which is almost 18 inches long has occurred in the last month so you have to deal with it most plants even like your roses they have two spurts of growth the first spurt is in spring or late spring and you get another spurt in August. So it's important to deal with the first spurt of growth. Now if this is an example, I will show you what I have to do at this time of the year. So all these long shoots, I let them grow till they get a bit long, but I don't wait till they are about uh, 70 centimeter or a meter long. If I didn't do anything by the end of year, the year, these shoots will be about a meter long and that would defeat the purpose. So I'm going to trim them all back. Just trim them in a conical shape, the famous conical shape. And that should keep the shape and increase the ramification. So that is what we do throughout the year. If I want to make a branch strong, I will let it grow longer to make it stronger and then I will uh, cut it back. But if I feel that I don't need it anymore, then I cut it back to just increase the ramification. So this is what I'm going to do with most of these maples. So wherever I get long shoots, I'm just going to trim it back into the conical shape, just to keep it in shape. Also, this, this is an ordinary European beech or English beech. This tree I've grown for years and years. Look at the beautiful moss. And again, Look at this new shoot here. I'll just cut this new shoot off to show you. That is the old wood. This is the new wood. So in the space of one month, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves already with another one coming. Seven leaves in the last month. So you don't want it to grow that long. So you cut it back to an outward bud like that. Maybe just keep two leaves. So this whole tree I've got to go around and take off all the leaves but two of the new leaves. And of course, keeping the conical shape. I don't want to spend half an hour just doing that, but this is what I will be doing with this. So all these maples I'll go around, snipping away, snipping away. Even when I used to go to Japan, I was always fascinated that this is the job that they used to leave the dear women, the mothers who used to do the cooking, they, in their spare time, they used to just keep trimming these trees. Talking of new growth, they're going to get new growth on virtually everything. This is a very unusual type of yew. And look at the new growth on this yew. So beautiful. I will let it grow to produce little longer branches. And then I will come back to it because I'm restyling this tree. I want to take that leader up and make it a more conical shape. So there's a long-term plan for this one. I sometimes don't rush these projects because they're long-term plans that I have for it. So all these trees which have the new growth, I'm going to go around snipping. But as I said, I don't want to keep spending all my time just showing you these very uh, mundane chores, but they are chores that we have to do. So these are the spring chores. This is that forsythia that I keep showing you with the thick trunk. The flowers are finished, I'll let the growth grow and then I'll trim it back so that again I will get more ramification on this. So same with this one, this is alcova. I used to call this the organ pipes and all this growth has grown in the last four to five weeks. So if I don't want to keep letting it grow 
ad infinitum, I will just go around and cut it back. Sometimes I prefer to use my felcos because they're a bit stronger. So as long as you do this, you will increase the ramification. And ramification is what these old mature trees are in need of. I will bother about the layering or creating the layers at a later stage. So keeping it in this dome shape, pruning the long shoots off. But remember, I don't prune it straight away. I let it grow a bit first and then we will uh, go into it and prune it. So that's that one. So as we walk around, you will see all these long shoots. I'm going to go around and just do that. And look at that beach. You look at the new growth on that. All that new growth. And while we are here, the crab apples, which were in full bloom about two, three weeks ago, have finished. And now the fruit are going to set and the fruit will develop big and will turn red by about August, September time. And they will remain on the tree till about Christmas. So the lovely spring color is always a joy to watch because it's such a delicate lime green. And of course, some trees are late in coming into leaf. Look at this one. This is a Celtus and the leaves are just coming out. So I'm not in a rush. If I had grown it in the greenhouse, it would be in the leaf um, much sooner. But this has been out all winter in the open. So this is not in a rush to uh, <clears throat> come into leaf. While I'm passing here, let me show you these projects that I keep doing. This is a new cedar forest that I've been making. And look at all the new growth on this cedar forest. Look at that beautiful growth. So I will keep an eye on it. This was only planted a few months ago. So it has a long way yet to grow. And look at these Korean hornbeams of ours. Look at the beautiful leaves and look at that beautiful trunk. Again, I'm not in a rush to clear the trunk. I will strengthen the tree. So I have three of them here. So these are a very long term project. Very, very long term project. Beautiful Nebarion, all these three trees here. Now let me show you something else which you don't often see. Uh, oh, look at this one. This is a Japanese beech, Fagus cronata. And because this is growing in the open, it's not been protected in the winter. It's a bit late in coming into leaf, but it will come into leaf. Let me show you a very unusual thing. And here you are. This is our conker tree, horse chestnut bonsai. I'll just get this out of the way. And it's actually flowering. Conker tree in bloom. I will take you to the field because last year, if you remember, I did a video of all our conker trees that are still being trained in the field and I'll show you. I've got about 20 or 30 of them all in bloom. So I don't think many people can produce a conker bonsai that actually flowers. But because I love big trees, these big trees actually flower well. Another variety that you don't often see as bonsai is the small leaf lime. These are just being trained. We grew them from virtually from seed. And these must be about 20 year old from seed. And I'm going to develop a superstructure on this tree. Now let's look at the pines. Let's look at the pines. If we walk around the nursery, I will show you the candles that are developing on the pines. I have, as you know, many, many pines. This is a five needle pine, Japanese white pine. And you look at the new candles on that. So the purple ones are the flowers. And then the white flowers are usually the cones. So if we look around, all these white pines are showing such healthy signs of growth all with the new candles. And this one is very, very prominent. Look at that. How beautiful is that? All those purple flowers. It is such a shame to actually prune them off. I will just leave it to grow because it looks nice, but I really should take those candles off. I'm going to explain about the candles in just a moment. 
Um, while we are passing, I might just show you some of the wisteria that we have. The wisterias again are a bit late because we had a very hard spring. So this is the purple one. And they've got this beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Let me show you the white ones that we have. Before I show you the white wisteria, I will just explain to you. These are also wisteria bonsai. These are grafted trees. And this one is not showing any signs of flower. So sometimes it happens that trees, especially flowering trees, they take a rest. So one year you will get a lot of flowers and then the subsequent years you may not get any flowers. So uh, those again are the purple ones just coming in but over here Look at these white wisteria here. And you notice that I'm growing them in big pots because I want to strengthen the tree and make them into bigger trees. I want a big trunk, so I put them in big pots. So the reason for putting in these bigger pots is to get the bigger tree with a bigger trunk. So these are different um, types. I've got purple, blue, and white. I've also got a pink variety, but the pink one is showing signs of old age. I've got to propagate from that. And the satsukis are not yet in bloom, but I will show you what's happening to the satsukis. We've got some. We won't get distracted by all these colorful maples, but some of them are already in flower. But I will also show you in the greenhouse, we've got some more which are in full bloom. Now let's go into the back greenhouse. Okay, while I'm passing, I will just show you this particular Scots pine. Look at all those candles here. Look at those candles. And I always like to remind people that the candle, if left unchecked, becomes a stem. So for instance, this little stem here, or this stem, two years ago, it was a candle like that. And because it wasn't cut off, it became longer and longer. So if I left this to grow, it'll become a longer branch. So all these have to be taken off if you don't want to develop the branches longer. So just go around and shear them off. You don't have to choose which one you want and which one, but Scots pines are so tough. You literally take every single candle off and you'll get back budding. You look at this, this is what we call back budding. You see all these little shoots here like that? These have grown because we took the candle off last year like that. So I take off some more, I'll get more budding there. So that's how you deal with it. So when they call pack candle pinching, you don't have to go around with the fingers to do it. Just with the scissors, you can go around and do that and you'll get back budding. Let me show you these two big Scott spines that I've been working on for the last, uh, only the last year, I think I did a video of it, these two. And it was very straggly, but by taking the candles out last year, I've got it to produce much tighter growth. So again, this year, I'm going to literally take every single candle out. As long as you leave the green, it will bud back. See all this budding back, these thinner shoots have come from doing this, doing precisely this. No sophisticated candle pinching and all that. People try to make it more complicated than it ought to be. I don't know why they like to do it. They do it because they want to show how clever they are and show that it is a mysterious exercise. People hate me, I believe, because I make things too simple. I steal the mystique out of it in some way, but there is no mystique. There is no mystique. These are just plants. And that's all you do. Just go around, remove every single candle, and it will become more and more compact. Now, even a tree like this, I'll probably take about 15 minutes to do the whole tree, but I won't spend a whole day. You see, by doing it last year, you see how compact and tight it has become. And because it's become tight, I now have the choice of taking out the ones that I don't want, you know, the branches that I don't want. So this is how you develop density in Scots pines. Scots pines usually are very, very straggly and floppy trees. But by constantly doing this, 
you will get control of it and you will get tight growth and a lot of bud back. So I'm not going to spend all the time just doing this entire tree, but this is what we just generally do. And if you look at this again, this is another instance. I've got to deal with all these in the same way. Cut every single one off. So again, back budding. Let me explain to you. These little shoots here have come by doing this, this one here which was a bare stem. And by doing this, I'm going to get shoots going further back in the wood. So that's how you get back budding and more density than the pine. Ah, this is a very good example here. Look at that. Look at all the back budding there. See, these are new shoots on old wood. So if anyone tells you you can't get it on old wood, they don't know what they're talking about. So you will get it. Look at that again. More examples of that. Look at all that new shoot on the old wood. So this is what happens when you keep pruning it like this, you get back budding. Now let's look at some of these Japanese five needle pine. Look at this one. Look at it, look at it. There are a few purple flowers here. So if I don't want to let it become a stem or a branch, I just go around and literally remove every single one. And if I want it budding further back, I can take off not just the new candles, I can take off some of the old growth. So it's not just removing these, I'm actually removing some of the old stem. So this is how you shape the tree as well. These are what we call semi-trained trees. I've got to wire every single branch, that's going to take time. And with thousands and thousands of trees, we will do whichever we feel are priority jobs. And some people like to buy the trees, semi-trained so that they can finish the wiring and refine it themselves. So there is method in my madness. So you've got to respect what customers want and what customers taste are. This is a cork bark black pine, which I, or a friend of mine has been growing for years. And she gave this tree to me because she doesn't want it anymore. So even this one, you look at it from this old wood, look at the branches coming from the really old wood. This is a new branch that has come. And these are new branches. So by constantly taking out the growing tips, I get the density on that one. That was grown from a tiny graft. It was a grafted tree that we, it was done in this country, not imported at all. Let's take you for a quick look into our greenhouse there. Not our greenhouse, our tunnel. This is where trees are constantly being uh, potted up and grown and so on. So you see all favorites in all states of uh, development. So we produce all our own Fuji cherry. And we also grow, uh, oh, let's show you the wisteria seed, isn't it? Now. We always talk about sowing seeds. There are many seeds here. Those, those are Japanese iris seeds coming up, but let's show you what happened to the wisteria seed. Now, this is a very good example. Here you are. Now, these are seeds which have germinated literally in the last two weeks. And we just put hundreds of seeds and look at them all growing up, like runner beans almost. But this one, what happened, because it got too hot in April, some of my staff took this tray out and placed it outside and the frost got it. So the frost killed these. So this was a mistake, you know. Well, I can't tell what to do, you know, um, because sometimes the staff take initiative, but it doesn't always prove correct. But I've got enough there. So I will have hundreds and hundreds of hysterias. So this is a mixture of both the white ones and the blue ones that we sow, and they will all grow into lovely wisteria plants. Coming into the back greenhouse, what do we have here? Again, we have lots of trees in different stages of being developed and grown. So this is a Bouvernensis here. And again, look at these, because it's been growing in the greenhouse for much longer, the cans have already opened. So they're going to open out into needles, but I can still do it by pruning it completely off and I will get bud back. You see all these new shoots here? This is last year's bud back. 
So on the old wood, you'll get this. If I do this, I will get more budding over here. So this is how we get the tree to bud back. Simply by removing these candles completely, it'll bud back on the old wood. See, this is what is happening, like so. That's bud back. So go around and remove every single candle, and you'll get a more compact and dense tree. Now let's look at some other trees of interest. These are a lot of newly made ones. Ah, let us show you this tree. Today is the 23rd of May, but about five days ago, we showed you that video of bending the unbendable, impossible larch. And many people commented that they thought the tree would die. And here it is about three months later, and look at the growth on that tree, bending the impossible bend. And there you are, and this is the future direction of the tree. I'm going to develop more of a crown, and I can even plant it at a slightly different angle later on. And this is what is happening. So none of the trees die, and look at the callousing here. You see how the thing is callousing? I hope you know what callous means. Callous is the healing of the wound. You can still see all that active callousing taking place here. And that will heal over nicely, and that will be well on its way, right as rain. So while I'm here, we are repotting some of our trees. But when we do the repotting at this time of the year, uh, we don't take much root off. So now that I've put it in a larger micropot, these are all trees that we train. We buy these. Uh, Japanese white beech has very small trees from Japan. These came all in the early 90s, I would say, when they were only like finger thick and they've been grown in the field to thicken up. So it's taken like 20 or more years, 20 or 30 years to grow in our field. And then we get this thick trunk and I'm going to train it in a natural style beech. More branches there. I may carve that. But whoever buys it may want to choose another front. So this is how we develop these trees. This is a little experiment that Josh, my cameraman here, has done, little Dawn Redwood, given it a severe bend and a little more wiring. And this is going to be delightful little small Shohin bonsai. This is Dawn Redwood. What else can we show you in here? OK, there's another thing which I just noticed. And it is this uh, juniper. This is San Jose juniper that I'm in the middle of working on. And many people will look at this tree and they will throw up their hands in horror and say, ah, oh, this tree looks as if it's dying. Why is it getting all that yellow foliage? Now, those of you who are less experienced may not realize that even like human hair, as you get new growth, the old growth drops off. So the old needles are like the old leaves. As you get the new leaves, the old foliage will shed. So don't panic when you see that happening. You look at the tips, how strong they are growing. The tips are growing strongly. So the old foliage, at this time of the year, around late spring, we call this late spring, you will get the yellowing inside. Just as you get the yellowing of the pine needles in October, Many of the conifers, like the junipers and uh, taxus, they shed the old needles as the new needles come. Look at all that new growth there. Now, I'll move on to some other junipers as well. Mind you, you won't get it on every juniper, but if you see it on some junipers, do not panic, because it is quite natural. See, that one, that is a Itoigawa. There's some traces of yellowing in there. So again, that one we'll get some yellowing foliage. Now let me take you to this one here. This is a typical Chinese juniper. The variety is Kisu, which is a very common one. And look at this one. Look at the yellowing here. That is all the old needles falling off. So I know that this is not dying. It is just getting the yellow foliage. And when they rub off, 
they should be okay. The same happens with some of the U's. This is a Japanese U, Texas Cuspidata, and you look at all that fresh new growth here. This fresh new growth has happened in the last month, and inside the tree, the old foliage, look at that, the old foliage is shedding. Okay, I will now show you with English yew. Now, this is English yew. I have, in fact, two trees. And there's lots of new growth here. Look at all the new growth on that. And the old foliage sheds. This is what they do. So again, as long as there are signs of new foliage, do not panic. Look at the one next door there. That also has a lot of yellow foliage, but I know that that tree is not dying. It's just shedding the old leaves, and you'll get the new ones. As long as it's fed well, it will continue to grow. And in, I would say, four weeks' time, it will be covered in new foliage. So do not panic. There are certain times when you see these things happening, you get extremely worried, but there's no need to worry, because they will all come again. Now, while we're at this end of the nursery, let's show you these satsuki azaleas. Oh, this is new growth on Juniper rigida. But this one hasn't got yellow foliage. Some of them have, but some of them are, because these are more projects. And this is, these such a case, you must be wondering why they're in here, because many of these had one or two branches die, but I'm restyling the tree, regrowing the branches, and giving it a new shape. I keep a close eye on the air layerings I'm doing. This air layering was done in late autumn, I think September, October. So this was an experiment in doing late air layering. No signs of root yet, but I'm it's sure there. it's going to happen very shortly. Here. Yeah, very shortly it will happen. There are signs of it there. Okay, so we'll follow the progress of that. Uh, and while we're here, let's show you this is that great big larch that we air laid with a six inch diameter trunk. Look at all that new growth. I didn't pull it out, but I know it's growing strong. And this famous air layering, which is about more than 20 feet long. This is only six or 12 feet of it. I cut off the top 10, 10 feet because it wouldn't fit the greenhouse. So I hope I've shown you enough of the topical tips that you should be aware of. Main thing is not to panic. Just keep an eye and let it grow. So there are lots of projects that you may recognize. While I'm passing, I will just show you what to do with some of the new growth on larches. Again, larches are almost like pines. They don't have candles as such. But they get the new foliage, which is long like this. So you simply prune them off. And that's how you keep it dense. This is my famous windswept larch, which I've now made into a cascade tree. It's shown in all my books. And talking of books, I better make a plug. Because for the last five days, I've been working on the pictures for the remastered version of Bonsai Masterclass. There has been such a big clamor for my book Bonsai Masterclass to be reprinted. And fortunately, because that's one of the few books that I have there, text copyright, I'm getting someone else to republish that book and using new pictures, and I'm going to update that book. So there's no need to pay 200 pound or 300 pound for secondhand copies. You will getting a very new, very shortly, a brand new version of Bonsai Masterclass, updated by me. So that is the good news I have for you. Uh, so I hope you continue to enjoy the videos. As I said, my videos are really meant to be a teaching aid. And as long as you enjoy it, I will keep doing it.